God, there's a new opening. Yes, there's always something that goes out of control with the tech. And good, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to musicals101.com's I'll Say. I am musical theater historian and lecturer John Kenrick. And I am equity actor William J. McKay on a big day in my life. But first, let's introduce do, our guest, Bill, please. Oh, you want me to do it? Please. Miss Sandra Brunel Nice, who, well, we're going to get to that in a second. So we're just going to, we have her on screen. But first, I am going to just quickly say that this is a big day for me not just because Sandra's with us, but because I today have gone fully into the acting world where I have now have a website, WilliamJMcKay.com, which is what we all have to look at him. Isn't he stunning? One of my friends said, I look like I'm trying to sell myself on the streets. Well, <laughs> he could bite me. But beside that... Um, this well, is if you're what, selling yourself on the streets, yeah. This, which is kind of what one must do. But yes, this is the website. This is what actors now have to do. We no longer just give eight by tens with resumes on the back. We have to create websites with connections to backstage and actors connection. And that's just the calling card. And what you're looking at is the calling card. But we shall move on. So there we go. Big day for it me. It's amazing. It thank does. you, thank okay. you, thank you, thank you. Congrats. A lot of work went into it. Different photographers, yada, 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 yada. Okay. Uh, let's get out of that. So, <laughs> today is, you know what, Sandy? I keep struggling with your name because to me, you're always Sandra Bunnell, even though I know you're Mrs. Niece and it gets confusing. The acting name is Sandra Bunnell Niece? Yes. Well, that isn't said with, with total... Well, it's not <laughs> like a woman who made a choice, who is madly in love with her husband, she might add. But I would like my name to be just Sandra Brunel because that's who I am. So I'm thinking about that. Maybe this is the way I'm telling my husband. <laughs> <laughs> you should oh. talk to Debbie Shapiro Gravit. She will tell you all about she, She's a great musical theater star. And she went through that. She made her name as Debbie Shapiro. And then she got married and it became Debbie Gravit. And for a while it was like, well, I better make a Debbie Shapiro Gravit just so people know it's me. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, when I got married, I took my husband's name, too, but the acting name, because it always was William J. McKay, will stay William J. McKay. All right. So um, a couple of head notes for everybody here. And that is that Sandy and I know each other. We really know each other. Not that way, but we really know each other. We <laughs> went to, confer. <laughs> we went to uh, we'll discuss it soon, but we went to our um, acting school together, uh, our graduate degree. And then after that, we did not not stay friends. We stood up at each other's weddings and we have gone through what we've gone through with each other. We know each other really well too well in fact this this half an hour ago when she wrote me and said i'm really nervous i said i'm really nervous too and then I said what are we going to do about this and i said should we masturbate i don't know i said john i said i'm not in the mood okay you know, again hi bob hi bob i'm sorry okay all right let's get much more serious so Sandy. Just, just for the fun of it, I want to throw something in here. So I am in uh, Morristown, New Jersey. Bill, you are out in Long uh, Island, New near Fire Island, Island, but it's Long Holbrook, Island. Long Island. Right. And Sandra, you're coming to us from? Uh, well, the Reno, Nevada area, but I live in the sister city of Sparks. So I teach Sparks. in Reno, work in Reno. It's so Reno. I, you know, I live yeah. in Sparks. Well, Sparks matters. Uh, Reno, which used to be the smallest, no, was it the biggest small town in America? The or The biggest small, little the, city. Little city in America, that was mm. it. Yeah. Because yeah. that's where everyone went to get divorced. They had mm -hmm. to get divorced. And there were so many rings in the Truckee River. Like the, really? Throw their rings into the river, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, yeah you, could, you could see them sparkling at certain points, yes. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. Where are you from originally, Sandra? Um, I was born in um, the Berkshires in Massachusetts. Yeah. And in what year, thinking. Sandy? Oh, I'm kidding. Stop, Don't stop answer. That. Stop that. And then the woman, her mom, age, my mother will come tearing down from the Catskills with an axe if anyone a, asks a woman her age. She had a look on her face like, wait, this we did, we're not doing that, are we? No, I'm 46. I don't care. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. I feel pretty good about it. You guys are probably a little jealous of my 46-ness. Well, I'm, I'm not jealous about 46. I saw shows you could never see. So believe me, I'm not jealous. <laughs> you start not feisty. 
Okay, so moving along. So, um, Sandy, I'm going to start off with something a little weird, but could you have imagined that 19 years ago, technically 20, 20 years ago, we were in our third, which would be our senior year uh, at school. Uh, did you imagine that you would be here? I don't mean here on this television show, but did you imagine that you would be where you are in your life? Um, no, that's a great question. I thought I would be a professional actor. Um, I did think I'd have a child, so that's correct. I always wanted a child. Um, but I thought that I would be, I thought, you know, I was something special. Right, so and, and I would say similar for me. Oh, there's an echo. I thought similar for me. Uh, to be surprised, I'm not surprised where I am, but I am astounded by what has happened in my life in the last 20 years. Uh, so that has been shocking, but I'm not completely surprised about uh, where I am now. All right, so we said we, wait, what? Oh, there, there's an echo of some kind, but let's hope I'm it goes away. I'm just trying to be in the center, that's all. Um, you what, what? Oh, she'd rather be in the center. It's, she's say. going through an Ethel Merman thing. Okay. All right. Um, how many children in your family? As in your, you know, your your birth family? There were three of us. And where were you in the order there? Mm. Can you guess? Middle. Middle, yes. And uh, where did you go to grammar school? As in what city? Oh, Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Okay. Uh, in any shows or anything then? Was there anything happening that no. made you think I'm no, going to be an actress? Nothing. Okay. High school? Um. High school, I was in several shows. Uh, of course, they were musicals, right? No, I've never been in a musical because I can't sing, and I could barely do a grapevine in aerobics class. Not singing has not stopped anyone. Haven't you seen any musicals lately? No. John, oh. I was in a voice class where one of the teachers turned to me, we're singing Happy Birthday, and they said, do not ever sing again. <laughs> That wasn't our school, was it? No. Okay, good. Because it, with us, fun. with our school, we had to sing. We had to sing. And so very cleverly, I pulled her aside and said, well, why don't we do the song Sing from a chorus line in which uh -huh. she gets to sing flatly or badly. Hey. We, we did really well on purpose, and I did the rest. All in right, so the audience, the we had to sing, like with a fucking piano and... Oh effing piano and stuff and they'll save my life sorry i reason i'm laughing is oh so we're going to drop the f-bomb okay we're going to keep <laughs> moving here and so uh what plays... elaine did it on network tv before she died what plays did you do in high school because they didn't have musicals right i know the answer to this i already yeah. spoke to you but um so um, what did you do my first play i was ever in was called becoming memories and i played ida and then i I know nobody knows that show, but you might want to look it up. It's okay. Uh, I did Steal Magnolias and I was Malin. We did a murder mystery. I was cast in everything that we did. Okay. College. Where'd you go to college? <clears throat> I went to UC Riverside and. Um, which is in. There. Which is where? California. So uh, that's a big switch to the other side. Um, uh, because I know the answer to this, but by that point, was your mother in, in California? And uh, I was. Uh, 10 or 11, we moved um, to Southern California to live with my grandmother. So but dad was in Massachusetts. And you are still very close to both. I have met both. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, right, what? Yes. Yes. Okay. Different. Sorry. I was going to wait. Did something happen? Okay. Oh, my God. Uh, what plays in high school, in college? Um, a lot. Um, our Town, which was one of oh. my favorites. Who were you in Our Town? I was I didn't. Emily. Of course you were, Emily. That 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 part makes me cry. The two of them. Well, I do part. have to say that my um, professor Rick Risso passed away this week, and he was the director, and he was one of the first uh, whew, people who believed in me. What time is it? I got her to cry at ten minutes after seven. I'm <laughs> well, so Rick just died. I'm so proud. <laughs> I have to. Get... Okay, what else? Got to keep moving. Quick, quick, quick. Um, quick. Oh my God, I did Oleana and I was Carol. Um, I did uh, Much Ado About Nothing, I was Hero. I didn't get into the Heidi Chronicles, but that's okay. I would have been good in, for one of those parts, actually. I yes. was in Heathen Valley, I was in um, Amadeus, I was Stanzi. that was cool. Um, so did you, at, at what 
you know, it went that well that you thought this is it? Well, by the way, were you majoring in acting? Yeah, it was theater. You couldn't major theater. in acting, but I was a okay. theater major. All right. So you said, uh, this is what I'm going to do. I know I'm rushing this along, but kind oh, of. I knew it before. Um, I knew it in high school before I got my first show. My brother and I would watch the soap opera Santa Barbara, and then we would on our I wasn't beta on that TV, one. <laughs> our beta TVs, we'd pause the scenes and write them out. And I was always Mason's sister, Eden Capwell, and he was Mason. And then we would go into his room and play the evil brother and sister. And that's how I got some of my acting chops. Was any particular actor or actress uh, like an icon to you or, you know, a, yes. a, 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 a Martinez model? from Santa Barbara, Marcy Walker. He was really Santa hot. Barbara, <laughs> Lane Davies from Santa Barbara. A Martinez was smoking hot. I still have a history. Um, <laughs> um, and then um, there was Nancy Gran, who's on General Hospital now. Nancy okay. Gran. Who is she on that General Hospital? She's Alexis. Okay. All right. So uh, again, I have to keep moving along. So after college, there's two big things that sort of happened big to me. And so what are they? I know you may not think so, but I think so. In Nixon. So she was an extra in Nixon. Now, everybody look at that picture. I'm going to help here. OK, so she truly was in this. She played Spiro Agnew's daughter. Spiro Agnew was behind Nixon there. This is uh, who's the star of Nixon. Anthony Hopkins. Hopkins. So mm -hmm. Sandy is, I believe, of all of you looking this, it would be to the right. Uh, and I would suspect that that is the mother closest and that the two daughters and you are in the middle in that yeah. lovely hair. And yeah. I, if you ever see this yeah. film, it is actually fun to watch her because she is so excited when you see that this particular, I don't know whether you were told to be this way or you just excited to be there because it's kind of obvious and I kind of know you. So I would say, mm -hmm. I think you were excited to be in this particular you, you got to remember, Agnew was the governor of Maryland. Uh, so to his daughters being, uh, you know, nominated for national office and having fame on network TV was something no daughter of the governor of Maryland ever yeah. dreamt of before and has never dreamt of since. So, th yeah. of course, she would be excited. And, and of I course, Sandy knew that. John, I did my research and I knew that. And I, my inner object, as we call it from Uta Hagen's training, uh -huh. is that my daddy is up there. Look at my daddy. I mean, there's there's Nixon, but my daddy, this is about my dad. Yes. Look at, listen to her go. Okay. Um, what else did you do? And I hear, I think we have a story. I don't know the story, but you're going to tell us. So she oh. also was. So I was a resident um, stage manager at a little theater called the Hudson Theater in North Hollywood. Sit back so we can see you. No, I can't. There we go. Okay. You're good. Um, and I got $25 a night to run the show in this little booth that you climbed up a ladder. And what was the show again? Uh, oh, okay, oh, okay, go on. The name mm -hmm. of the show. It was my first one, I can't, it'll mm -hmm. come. But the work lights were on the stage, meaning you had to turn the, you had to set the lights, go flip the switch on the stage, which was on a pole in the center of the stage at the Hudson Theater, go back up the ladder. It was a slidey board and a tape deck that you paused. And I was everything, right? So half the cast in Melrose Place and that actor Richard Kind was in it. The one with the voice and he's got the nose and- Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were all so, they didn't see me. You know what I mean? Like they didn't see me. So the lights go down, the sound comes up, but then the lights don't go down. <laughs> and I'm 21 and a half. You know what I mean? And I'm like, fuck, like the Michael from Melrose Place is downstairs. Yeah, the guy in the bottom left corner, Heather Lockley was not there. She shows no. Um, and then there was Richard Kind, and maybe it was just him, but no, then a producer was in it too. And it was just awful. So then I had to reset to pre-show, come downstairs, and they were all at me at the bottom of the ladder. What are you doing? And I was like, $25 an hour. I'm just going to go in front of the audience, flip the switch, and start again. And... I cried the whole show that night. I just cried like with the tape deck. <laughs> like Michael from Melrose Place, even though I hate your character. Richard Kind, you're supposed to be the funny guy. You're not so funny right I, now. I had experiences working, you know, with different producers on Broadway with mm -hmm. certain actors who I just had loved in various things acting like absolute shits. And you know what? Yeah. The ones who act that way 
ultimately do pay a price for it. They really do, unless they are Elaine Stritch. Elaine Stritch got away with it, and she was a total <laughs> shit from the day she was born to the day they put her evil body in the ground. Yeah, I'm saying it because I had to put up with her crap more than once. She yeah. was a brilliant performer. On stage, you just loved her, but she was vile. She got away with it because she was Elaine effing Stritch. She yeah. was that good. Unless you are as good or better than Elaine Stritch, be a decent human being because people don't yeah. need to work with a-holes. We just don't. We don't. No. We're not going to do it. Life's too short. Uh, and there's always somebody who's going to be at the casting meeting who's going to look at everyone else and go, oh, you don't want to work with so-and-so. They're crap. Right. They're a right. vile person. So moving on. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Sandy, I'm going to read a speech that both of you and I heard together. I'm sure you remember this, but I'm going to have it. So the speech starts with, come to the edge. We might fall. Come to the edge. It's too high. Come to the edge. So they came and he pushed and they flew. Mm. And so Dean Lipton turned to all of us on the opening day of our training and he said, and come to the edge and fly. Sandy, what made you decide to go to the Actors Studio School of Drama? I have the book, by the way. <clears throat> yes. Mm. Just before you start, I'm going to say I, this is the book that we would get, you know, when you, you I'm <laughs> boiling away. And I ran through this and I got to tell you, I thought I was going to die. If I didn't go, I was going to just jump off a bridge. And I read it again yesterday, really recently. And my heart was pumping. Combination of, oh, my God, I remember the excitement. And also the reality. The reality of what did take place and what did not. But what made you want to go to that school? Um, I didn't get into Yale. <laughs> well, that was not the answer I was looking for, Sandy. I wanted to hear that I just lived for this moment. No, I uh, had a friend. You realize that all of our fellow students who will be watching this are going to go. They're going to laugh because they didn't get into Yale either. <laughs> I didn't apply uh, to Yale, so I probably thought better of my abilities. But what I made you choose this? You could have chosen. Like oh. No, you talk. I, I like the idea that it's method training. And I'd done a lot of that in undergrad. And I believed in the Stanislavski system. And um, you know what I mean? So I had experience with that. And I, I knew that it worked. And I liked it. And then I had a friend who she didn't continue on. Um, At the school? She, she did a year. And I think she got into Yale after that. Um <laughs> Seems to be a theme here. <laughs> but I liked um, I liked what they wanted to teach. I liked the methods they were choosing because there's so many methods. Even now I'm learning new methods as I um, am a, a professor and trying to get out of just teaching by white old men. You know what I mean? There's so many other options out there. But at that time, that's what I was learning. And I still stand by uh, the method and the American method in the studio. What was your audition piece? Uh, May's monologue from Fool for Love because I didn't have a scene partner and I couldn't afford to fly to New York. So I did it at the Los Angeles location. Really? And was Lipton there? No. Oh, so who ran it? Mark, who's that famous Mark Rydell? Is that? Yes. Wow. There. And then a couple other professors that I don't remember now. Um, and I got in. Okay. Um, what? Were, who were your who was who were the main acting teachers who you, you know we have we have two and then we oh i'm sorry audience we have one the first year and then a second the second year and then we're in the third year we're working on our thesis so who was your first acting teacher well, elizabeth kemp yes so um when i got us to all we're going to do a little something about her later but very quick uh what did she teach meaning i don't mean in your heart what was her basic what did she do um, a lot of private moments, a lot of character work, a lot of animal work, a lot of green light, which is relaxation, um, being in touch with your body on stage and how you can use that to um, access your truth. You know, did you do the um, cup thing and all that sort of stuff? Because we did in our thing? class, the cup, you know, did you drink from a cup that's fake? And did you do yeah, the, the drink? breakfast drink? So that's a sensory, okay. a lot of sensory work. Good. Good. So yeah, did we. Yeah. Exercises. I yeah. loved it. I absolutely loved it. Uh, and it has stayed with it now. Me. I steal uh, all of her shit. We do the breakfast drink. 
Yes. We do the green light. As a teacher, right? I did the same thing. I've stolen also from it. It's not stealing. It's yeah. what we were taught and we pass it on. That's what is wanted. And again, I could spend hours on this and that we can't. Who was your second year teacher? Barbara Poitier. Now, Barbara Poitier, I don't know as well because uh, Elizabeth Camp, I didn't have her as my teacher, but I went into her, uh, paid extra to be in her uh, uh, after school classes. That's not what they are. Right. Uh, private session <laughs> kind of things. Not after school. I would school. say that I won the lottery. Uh, 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 Yes, you did. Well, I mean, really many different. of the teachers at the school were excellent. Uh, uh, I, I, I kind of we made a promise to each other, Sandy and I, that we would mention the good ones, kind of thing. But oh, Bill yeah. Coco teaching us theater, and the voice teachers were exceptional, and um, you know all of that. But Barbara Poitier, what would you like to say about her? Um, she has a quote that she says uh, that she likes to have laughter in her classroom. And she always did. And so that's what I do. And uh, it makes the kids feel safe and creative. And she would always eat a boiled egg and have like a salt shaker, you know. So you could be in this emotional scene on the ground. She stand over here with her boiled egg. I don't believe you. <laughs> it's it's actually if it's hysterical the hell that we went through but it wasn't hell there were oh, my brilliant. first year was rough my next two years were wonderful i had andreas uh you know who was stunning uh he was the naked guy and oh now i'm forgetting oh my god his broadway debut uh I'll, it'll come back to me he'll kill me right now if bent? he's watching this uh no he was not in he'll bent uh no he wasn't and stop it it was the what the play about the um the uh the man who breaks the code in uh in europe and Ring he was great. Uh, with uh, with, uh, with uh, derek jacoby yes he was he was the original that's the guy he played wow. uh, and andreas and i uh, it just i was very very lucky i was very i had a good yeah. solid teacher the first year i'm smiling because some of my classmates would be going bill you're actually saying that she was <laughs> and my yeah. and andreas was great and again i want to spend so much time in this and i can't but i i just want to move on yeah. how was um how was uh what was it like being in new york city it changed my life, changed my person. It, I met some of the best friends in my life, and a lot of them are actor studio members. Yeah, people that I am so blessed to know. Even like someone like Karina, I haven't spoken to her for I don't know how many years, but she's right here in my heart. There's so many people like that. And um, Matt Hammond, you know, like you have Gainey. I, I don't want to, because then I won't say everyone. I'm like, right, I was going to say, don't do this because they're all, they're all, all this going to get mad. But. Uh, and then as a worker i was a server i worked uh you can say a lot it. of different restaurants and those freaking people are some of the best friends for life um what happened in our third year at the beginning of third year september 11. um are we talking about that i got into the studio no my show? september 11th september 11th. Oh, our third year yeah. <laughs> what were you oh, talking yeah. about don't go there <laughs> uh yeah september 11th and yeah uh that will come into something with us uh later but yes we were there at the same time for that you were the only phone call you were the first phone call i made probably the only phone call because the phones went dead but i was definitely yeah, trying correct. to call her uh i figured she'd be trying to come to school what was your um in our third year we all have to do a thesis it is sort of a presentation that we make to the public that says here we are john is the reason i did mine he's the one that gave me a monologue really? to do with the safe sex on tidy endings i spent the three years working on it i was determined that i would get to do that and i did and yeah, what was your piece uh danny in the deep blue sea by shanley yes how did it go uh wonderfully yes it did i had to <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this comes out bad. When I say I had to watch it, it's not because it wasn't well acted. It was one of the best, but I had to watch it body parts. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah, uh, the director Ken, he went for it. Uh, he did. And then you and I were both very, very lucky. You were chosen originally to be one of the pieces that would go to the actor's studio to be performed. And then about a week later, I would say I got chosen also. And both of us yeah. went on the same night. So we would yeah. watch each other do our work on the uh, the winding staircase, well, the brick wall in the back. Days. Yeah, it's it's sacred ground. It's sacred ground. I want to stay with this, but I can't. What um, we're going to move on to Magda. What would you like to say? Remember, no, the audience doesn't know anything about this. I was in Magna, by the way, but you go. Uh, it's a, a short film that uh, was based on the very first play I ever wrote that I would say, going back to Elizabeth Kemp, that I wouldn't have been able to write that without her class. So as I enter more writing and I'm, I'm moving on as a writer, 
um, she she holds that place of honor for me. Um, so I had experienced an incident. <laughs> call it an incident. It's so awkward to talk about it. Something happened to me, and it took me many years to process that I was sexually assaulted um, and how to classify that. And I don't even think I still am comfortable with it. Um, so Yet I, you I made a film about, about it. it. And you started it. Right. I didn't. I what? And you started. Oh, I started in the play, yeah, but yes. the film was Jamie and you. Oh, that's right. Oh my God, I forgot. Yeah. Well, that's a compliment that you think it was me. I swear, I forgot. Well, because you were there. Uh, by the way, I did not play the person who assaults her. I was one of her teachers. But oh my God, yeah, right. oh my God, I forgot that because it is twenty years ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, and what does that lead into? Well, that was um, my move to Reno, and I moved here because my friend wanted to make it, and he had the funds to make it. And then my New York boyfriend broke up with me. So I had nowhere to go. So I was saving for a broker's fee. He you was know, a I dick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Those damn New York boyfriends. No, he was he was oh. cute, but he 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 was no, he I I did like him, but uh his, I, I, no one of them. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Anyway, as we all did. Husband, he did me a favor because then I met my husband and we are um What is your husband's name? Adam Neese, and we are Bubs, and I have a beautiful son and we have a beautiful life together. So Okay. So um um we have a lot that happened during this period of time. So and this is I am leading up to something that we will talk about at, at the very end, but I'm going it, to, it's almost like a, a roller of what I'm going to be talking about, but just go with me here. You had a play that made it into the New York fringe. What was that? She made it into the New York fringe festival. She wrote it and she starred in it. I hope that one, right? Cause I no. did see that. I right? directed it. I didn't star oh, in it. My God. <laughs> Were you in any of these things I saw? I feel like you saw you in all these things. I gonna I did go to it. But, yeah. My voice, right, John? Yes, <laughs> right. It was the Medea project with an adaptation of um, Euripides' classic Medea, but with the slant of women who kill their children. And it opened on the night of the Casey Anthony verdict. Oh, um, he was that verdict was the last. What was the Casey her. Anthony verdict? Maybe people may not remember. That she was not guilty of of what. Murdering, murdering her child, her child who somehow just died for no reason now and yeah. ended up in the trunk of the car yes um what um what went to europe um a taco truck on every corner or dreaming in english and this play was a response to donald trump's election and his um muslim ban hmm. so all the flags on that big flag are all the countries that he banned travel to where did, where was this done um we did it in prague Yes. So she went to Prague. And I was in this one. Yes, I know that one. And I, I while I was not in Prague, uh, I did uh, see it on. A, and I co-wrote this. It was co-written by Rachel uh, Raquel Lopez. So I just want to give her a shout out. OK. Uh, San Francisco. Uh, that was Parley Girl, which is the play that I started in that was um, the original play. The first play I've ever written that became Magda. It was the stage version. Okay, name some of the other plays. Of course, we'll lead up to the one we were both in, but I want to know some of the other ones. So one of those you're most um, proud of or want to talk about. Exactly There's a lot. In the Sun at uh, UNR. In which you? Um, I directed. Directed, because I was going to go, uh, were you starring in that? No. <laughs> um, I was in The Cake, which we just did a couple of years ago at uh, UNR, and I played Della, who was a conservative character who doesn't want to make a cake for a gay wedding. And that was a real challenge, but... Um, I feel like we succeeded. Go on. Keep going. Oh, I thought I was alone. No. Oh, we're here. <laughs> um, I directed Baltimore. Yeah. You're getting your close up. <clears throat> and How I Learned to Drive by Paula Vogel. Um, I've been in Fool for Love again. I was in a play called The Lions. Um, I probably have been in very, I don't know, 20 plays. And I think I've directed 10. I've had seven of my shows that I've written, produced here in Reno, which is really cool. Um, and I'm the uh, New Works director um, at the Good Luck Macbeth Theater here in Reno. So uh, what else? Are, what else are you doing? What? Uh, how do you make a living? Um, assistant teaching professor at UNR. I teach acting and I'm also the faculty advisor. I remember when you started and you were like, what am I going to say? What can we do? We actually talked about what we're going to start. What we like I'm in the room. But what were you going to talk about? What are you going to do? And here you are now. How many years ago was that? 12. Are you kidding? 
Mm-mm. Oh shit! <laughs> oh my God. You have imposter syndrome, Ain't John. Do you have imposter syndrome? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, and how yeah. have you? What has that? Uh, what has that meant to you? The teaching. Everything. I love being on campus. I love um, the students. I finally had some kind of a shift just before COVID, where I became less of a selfish person, and it became actually honestly more about them than me and how that made me look to be, oh, I teach theater, me. And I kind of evolved and it's all about them now and I'm a much happier person. Oh yeah, and when it's about them, then it all makes much more sense. Right, because otherwise you're fighting the business of academia. Yeah, no, and, yeah. No. You know and what the, I, mean? I, I taught at NYU for 14 years, so yeah, I know. Uh, let me tell so you. Even about- just you saying that, I'm like, oh, that's, <laughs> I yeah, love I, that. Yeah, I loved it too. Uh, you know, and then we got a new head of the department who didn't want people with Broadway credentials, and because she only came from University of Miami, so now almost everyone in the department is from regional theater. Isn't that wonderful? They got rid of all the Broadway, uh, you know, veterans who are in the in Whoa. the department. Yeah, can you, uh, it makes no that's, sense. Welcome to what happens in academia. That's what happens. Uh, so now you guys should be talking about another play that you were both in. Sandy, would you like to take this? Yes. Uh, 2015, am I correct? Yes. Uh, so uh, at that time, I was working with Bruca Theater and Mary Bennett and all the wonderful people over there. And Which was in uh, Reno. <laughs> in Reno, Nevada. And Bill said, what if we could do the guys? And I was like, I don't know. Like At first, I got really nervous because he's done it so many times in so many big time settings, you know, in New York City. And uh, But we decided to do it and we went through all the equity process and um, we got to have this equity actor um, in our theater. That would be me. So, okay. yeah, Bill, sorry. Sorry. Did we get somebody Bill. good to play the part? What was sorry, definitely yes. cool was remember I'm in New York and she's in Reno. So I flew in on Labor Day night. We rehearsed Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I believe Friday was tech and we were Friday and Saturday and Sunday. We did the show. Correct. Am I close? Yes, that's right. And Mary Bennett was our director. And can you imagine the speed? That picture makes me look fat, by the way. I'm much thinner now, but yes. um, uh, And it was fatter now. I would. And you're what? You're what? Much fatter. (laughs) It's all, isn't it funny how the, how the pants almost match the carpeting. It's sort of fun. Um, um, I would say that, of all the stuff I have done, it probably was the one that has meant the most to me, the most. I think I was at, uh, certainly for playing that role, peak. I'm hoping to do it at the Actors Studio this year. I think it was the speed of it that we just had no time to bullshit with this one. And we just did it. And that was awesome. And the audiences were so welcoming to me. You know, everyone has said this in, I'm looking at the time here, that in California, you know, they all just love the New York actors and they do. Uh, and the, if you're, you know, I, I, I don't know, I'm not going to say I'm good. I will just leave it at, I did my best work. Um, and they were oh, very, very welcome. This. And yes. I loved your sister. And, and who are you with here in this photo? That's oh, yeah, Sandy. You could do it. That's me coming up the rear, as they say. <laughs> and um, Mary Bennett is the cute redhead in front of him, and she's also the executive artistic director of the Bruca Theater. Yeah, uh, my husband originally directed it, and then we we gave it over to her. Uh, but he came That's with right. me. I was actually sad to go. Meaning uh, it made me, I felt special there. And that doesn't happen, you know, all the time. Uh, I also was quite ill and didn't know, well, I did know it, I've come to think of it. And so I was like, oh my God, I may never get to do this again. And it turned out I did do just fine. But Sandy, you know, this isn't, this isn't, uh, this isn't the first time I've said it to you, but I'll say it again. I cannot thank you enough. It was for me, uh, probably the highlight of my acting career. It just, I don't know what the hell uh you know what hit me but it was it means always has meant a lot to me and so thank you and god it was a whirlwind there was no freaking time (laughs) we we, this is two people in a 90 minute play that that there's us that's it there's no more time to go all right sandy uh is there any other thing you want to discuss before i wrap us up because i have something i would like to say but is there any other play or any other piece Uh, no prison tell us about your prison life (laughs) um 
I'm um, actually uh, fortunate enough to work for uh, the Marin Shakespeare Company, and we bring uh, Shakespeare um, in the form of acting classes uh, into the prison system, and um, our students learn a lot of the craft, mm -hmm. and they have the opportunity to write and shape shows, and um, it's this is really awesome. This is awesome, Sandy. This is yeah. awesome. This is this is uh, all right. I'm going to you're going to get a speech for me. But the speech I also want to give to other actors, but in particular, my fellow cohort actors from the actor studio. And that is Sandy and I have talked about this over the years. Uh, um, uh, Bradley Cooper is from our school, not from our class. OK, but there is no doubt that Bradley Cooper's career is beyond anything any of us could have imagined for ourselves. Theater, film, television, a freaking Grammy. You know what I mean? It is amazing. And sometimes Sandy and I will call each other up on bad nights for either one of us going, oh, you know, what's come of us? And, and oh, well, here we are. And oh, well, and that kind of thing. <clears throat> and we boost each other up. And I tend to do it more for Sandy. And so this is what I want to say to everybody. And that is, look, we all go into our acting careers hoping, I would imagine, hoping to get an Oscar and a Tony and to have the kind of career that uh, others would be envy of us, envious of. But most likely only 1% even make a living, <clears throat> you know, or certainly reach the heights. 10% are lucky to make some kind of money. And that's simply the way it is. <clears throat> so what about all the rest of us? We don't know what our classmates are doing. Some of them could be doing amazing because we don't know. <clears throat> but I do know what some of my classmates are doing, and some things are amazing. And what is happening, and you are the prime example of this. You got a degree, and boy, have you used it. Listen to what you did. All right, I'm not going to repeat it all, but you teach. You were in all these shows. You went to Prague. You went to the New York Fringe Festival. I can keep going. You're teaching in prison. You just keep going and going. You're directing. You're, what, is your, what is your master's degree right now? You're going for another master's degree. What is that? In playwriting. In playwriting. It just keeps yeah. going and going and going. You didn't give up. And our classmates, same kind of thing. Two of our classmates were just in an off-Broadway show. I know yeah. one that I see in commercials all the time there's another one that i see on television shows there's another one that's a huge star in south america i believe it's extraordinary and the other ones we don't know because we just don't know but Many you, you, theater companies yeah i, 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 I want to say that your art and your life one concern you 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 would not have your life without your art and art is your life it's it, and 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 that's that's how we make a life out of this by putting the two in one column somehow. Correct. And how lucky way. are we? And so yeah. I want to end on a note for all of us. This is a clip. If it doesn't work, I'm going to read it. But a clip from Sandy's and one of my favorite teachers of all time. Uh, this teacher has since passed, and this note was relatively close. That she, she's on an airplane and she's giving a note of love to all of us who are her students and who are actors. If again, if this doesn't work, I will read it. So let's give it a shot. And do tell everyone who this is. Elizabeth Camp. I didn't say that. Elizabeth Camp. So sorry. Uh, who is an uh, uh, yeah. acting teacher at school. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Just know this. Every experience I've had with you is something that will always fly with me. And I hope you will take your wings and never forget that you can always fly it. Always soar. Remember, remember, your eagles, not chickens. Chickens, they just get stuck on the ground. You know what? I'll read. Remember, read. Yeah, I'll take it over. I have energy. And I hope that you will take your wings and never forget that you have them. This, this teacher means so much to both of us. You can always fly. You can always soar. But remember, you're eagles, not chickens. Chickens, they just get stuck on the ground, pecking around for food. So you remember, I have will. I have energy. And if I have talent, and if I think I am even a seedling of it, in, of an artist, then I have a responsibility to take care of it, to water it, to give it air, to give it life, nurture it, 
tend to it. To be there for it and to protect it. And I send you all my love and green light from the friendly skies of United. <laughs> and she held up her ring, which was green, and there was the green light. Sandy, you have more. She would be so proud of you. She would be so, because I'm so proud of you. I am so proud of you. It is amazing what you are doing. It is amazing what you do. And to my classmates, I wish I could look at them right now. To my classmates, you are doing the same thing. And if you're not, it's not too late. I just started again today. My pictures just went out. I haven't stopped. But I mean, starting again, I said I'm a old face. What did I say? Wait, a fresh face for old casting. And that's what I'm going with. Sandy. Should be very proud of yourself because certainly amen amen okay now John? sandy we have a set of questions that you're going to find familiar uh <laughs> it's the ones it's the questions originated by french television personality bernard pivot and reused of course by mr lipton uh in the from the actor's studio show and we're going to alternate and yeah, do, 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 yes yes fix your makeup everybody all right catch catch your breath makeup. i don't have makeup yeah. i just Ooh. actually look this way yes and um, so, Sandy, first, what is your favorite word? Oh, God. I act like I never heard these before. Um, I went through the same thing. Love. <laughs> I, I was like, oh. Love. Bill? What is your least favorite word? Isn't this cool that we're doing this, by the way? <laughs> Hate. What turns you on? Billy Miller. And what what is that? He was on General Hospital. He played the first <laughs> Why don't I know this? And I'm a General Hospital watcher. I he's the one I always text you photos of. Oh God, Billy Miller's gonna think I'm a stalker. Okay, you're gonna wait, who does he play? He used to play the fake Jason. And then General Hospital decided to mess oh, with us. Okay, yes. I think I know who it is, but send me the picture. I have a feeling I know who exactly you're talking about. Uh what turns you off? Um anti vaxxers. Thank you. Uh, what sound or noise do you Just love? Make him so happy. When my son says "mama." Ah. Uh, what uh, sound or noise do you hate? Styrofoam. <laughs> oh, isn't that awful? Hey. I 100 percent agree with you. Yes. Good choice. What is your favorite curse word? God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did, 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 <laughs> Kevin! I mean, you just please don't hold back, sweetie. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that was my nickname. In undergrad because i would swear so much my dad um, would be proud uh what profession other than your own would you like to attempt chef uh, what is it a chef chef okay what profession would you never like to do oh politician and finally if heaven exists what would you like to hear god say when you arrive at the pearly gates Here's your family. They've been waiting for you. Oh, I like that. Okay. Well, now, if you'd like to please stay with us, uh, we're going to uh, talk about a few things that have been going on in the arts this week. First of all, uh, for the first time ever, a Broadway musical debuted uh, on television before its Broadway, its first Broadway preview. The this excitement, was, the excitement, wasn't it? Well, weren't you thrilled? Well, there was a lot of excitement around this. It's the new musical, Diana. It's not from out of nowhere. It's from the creative team, the Tony-winning creative team responsible for Memphis. Memphis, which uh, is a great show. Which really was a it. huge hit. So that's not something to sneeze at. Uh, okay. Now, I happen to think whatever, and I'll have a lot to say about this show, Gianna DeWall, who played Diana, I think she is an incredible talent. Uh, she has some fine uh, Broadway credentials. She's been in a number of other shows. Uh, and I thought one of the strongest things in this show is when they just got out of the way and let her sing. She could belt the back wall out of anywhere. And she was wonderful uh, in many moments in, in her performance. Uh, as Prince Charles Rowe, Heart tramp, and I heart. I hope I'm saying that right. He's not particularly well known for theater work. Uh, 
He's better known for his pecs. I mean, for his television work. Um, but uh, here he is, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a cabaret performance in New York that, you know, I really approve of the cast of the costuming. Costume design is quite oh, exceptional. Yeah. I think Except that hat really is well like placed. See, frankly, I'd like to see more of the sax player behind him. Uh, but, you know, what the heck? Um, I, I thought his Prince Charles was played as a rather flat villain. Oh, see, I me. thought I thought. The, OK, no, I disagree. But I'll let me finish because right. I have most of this session today. So. Double Tony winner Judy K. What does she get Tony's for? She won Tony Awards for playing the diva in the original Phantom of the Opera. Uh, and as the older comic character in Nice Work, if you can get it. Yes. Um, she has been a favorite of mine ever since she took over the lead uh, in uh, on the 20th century back in 1977 when we were freshmen in college. Bill. No, I was. Uh, what was I three? I have. I don't uh, yeah, dream. on. I, I, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. You sat next to me when we saw the show. Um, <laughs> but anyway, she as Queen Elizabeth is, I think, one of the greatest assets in the show. Her solo, An Officer's Wife, was the one number I truly loved in the whole thing. Aaron Davey, another Broadway veteran who's been in so many shows, including Waitress, etc. Uh, she has uh, gives a marvelous performance. Oh, good. I thought she was terrific. Camilla. She was I, terrific. Uh, you know, as a cast, they were wonderful. But I thought the way that uh, Charles was written was very limited. I thought Aaron Davey made Camilla a human being. And since I consider the real Camilla Parker Bowles to be a human trash bag, that's a lot for me to say. If you can make her feel human to me, you've accomplished something. John, um, John, John. And, and we've just lost the entire sorry. country of England. I'm sorry. The Duchess of Cambridge is garbage. She was complicit with her husband in bringing the life of the former Prince of Wales to an end. <laughs> they destroyed her life. They set her up for destruction. And uh -oh. when it happened, they all just went... Just sit back, Sandy, and just so let them go. Don't even get me started on that. <laughs> all right. The ensemble in this show worked like dogs. They had to work hard. Uh, and doing an awful lot of choreography that reminded me time and again of a show from 1979 called Evita. This show keeps constantly acting like it's a Vita. Uh, and to well, me, the trying to be. Was, the, tr the problem was it kept looking like a spoof. It was like this was an extended SNL sketch, sketch or a, a Carol Burnett sketch making fun of a Diana musical. When they held the newborn William in their arms and Charles sang to her, Diana, you have given me a son. Let me say, jolly well done. That's a lyric? Are you freaking kidding this me? Is, this show, I'm going to introduce now. I am going to say probably one of the worst. The, the, the show has just, the, the lyrics are horrible. About 10 minutes in, I looked at my husband and I began to do the lyrics, meaning I knew what was coming. Yeah. And, I would, and I kept saying, well, that's not good because I'm not supposed to be telling them the lyrics. Sondheim would surprise me. The lyrics were terrible. Oh, and instead of saying your favorite word, Sandy, they keep using the Irish British uh, slang for the F word, feckin', 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 feckin'. This but rest once. is feckin', feckin', feckin'. They did feckin'. use it once. Right. Uh, the, uh, How dare you? Uh, come on, we're grown ups. This is America now. Because they were talking about the dress, the, right. the, the F U dress. In the end, I felt that the physical production was stylish, but limited. Boy, everything was blue. The floor was blue. The lights red, red. were blue. Lots of red. Hmm? Lots of red, too. Yeah, but but the blue really oh, oh, was, was overdone. In the end, I felt that it was a lot of style, a terrible lack of substance. To anyone who knows this story, and, and I am not only a royal watcher, but I'm, I, I know my royal history. Uh, Quite a this, queen. This yes. was so surface. This was so... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, when Diana and Mrs. Parker Bowles finally have it out and they call it with Camilla, it's the Thrilla in Manila with Camilla. Are you serious? Are you going to stoop that low? And what do they rhyme her name with? Uh, well, Camilla. Godzilla. You know, huh? Godzilla. Oh, and Godzilla, which that was at least appropriate, you know. Um, because she is a vile creature. I'm sorry, Camilla Parker Bowles is vile. 
You well, she have spoke so well of the you. marriage of a mother of the future king of England. No, not. A, I'm sorry. She's not an acceptable human being in my book. Right. She's not. I just don't like her. I Sandy, never before I talk, would you like to say something and get try to get a word in edgewise here? I thought the actor, actress, all three of the ones I saw act one were fantastic. Um, my sister and I watched act one together. And there was a certain point, and I can't remember. It's just when... Charles has that song and he says something like, I'm the best thing that you ever did or the only thing. What was that mm -hmm. song? Right, and, then right, he, right. and then he leaves and she's like, oh, I just want to have Charles. And I was repulsed. And I'm like, I don't think that's accurate. Like, I don't think that's, I mean, this is a woman oh, who was so. This thing made The Crown look like a documentary. And The Crown is a wonderful show. I love The Crown, but it yeah. is not historically accurate. It plays with historical you know fact all over the place which is That's fine it's a drama one yeah it's and called dramatic just, like go ahead what right but diana is the woman and why is she he leaves the room after abusing her basically and she's like oh i didn't know what to do to get my pressure back and then i my sister said i'm going over to my house well, in Act Two, she kind of uh, sort of gets her act together. And it's my turn now. I thought yeah, that yes. the costumes for the men were fabulous. They really costumes fit are well. Fabulous. Uh, the, co the costumes for the women, yeah. I'm a little iffy on because I think often they made her look bulky. Obviously, sometimes there were four costumes on top right. of costumes. The quick changes which was cool. were the quick changes <laughs> were impressive. I'm sure a lot the wedding dress. Oh. The wedding dress. How the heck did they do that, John? Uh, because they had a the it, it, the dress is actually on a mannequin kind of thing there was an actress there but the dress she the, the actress sort of steps into the uh the the member uh the diana's st on still on the stage you think that's oh. her but it's not she has the wedding veil on her and then oh, we get yeah. distracted and then she steps into the dress literally walks into it mm -hmm. like it's a photo booth now the only man's costume i really enjoyed oh you, i know it's coming no, i know diana's boyfriend He's in nothing but jodhpurs and boots, and he makes his entrance shirtless. That was act two, act. Sandy. You missed Shirtless that. out of the floor. And he says, you don't need a messy divorce. You just need a stud on a horse. Excuse me? Saying. Oh, my oh, God. Um, uh, and excuse me, why did they put that chest on display when they this one sitting right there. Yeah, they never. Stage. We never did get to see Charles. Uh, what I, what I, I know that you don't. You know, I guess you don't like Charles, and you, we're not supposed to. But the Crown certainly has made us feel bad for him. And this film, uh, this play, at does, times did the same thing. The last season, <laughs> you feel a little bad so far. The last season was this the fourth one that we just had? Oh, I don't remember. Uh, yes, fourth made him look like the shit that he is. <laughs> yeah. Oh my he god, he saying, isn't the total shit. His that, mother forces him to get married to somebody he doesn't love. His mother did not force him to marry Diana. His mother did not. His mother did not. His uncle, his grand uncle, pushed it. His father's uncle pushed it. Please Whatever. Get the history right. Mother didn't push a damn thing. She just said, "You're in your thirties, please." But instead of running around in the surf with these with these young girls, do something. The show uh, was nicely lit. I thought it was nicely lit. Yeah, the uh, light, uh, hum, a, hum one of the, the songs. Lighting. Isn't that nice? Hum one of the songs. Hum. Uh, do one of the songs. We can do a song from any musical. It's great. To oh, you be know underestimated. it. Underestimated. That much I remember. Underestimated. That's the only thing I remember. Oh, well, good for because you. Because they kept trying to make it an earworm. And eventually, even I, who despised that score overwhelmingly. Oh, and I did like An Officer's Wife, la da da la la, which was very repetitive. But Jody K made it work. Jody, Jody K. Make things like that work. Uh, the the sound is getting funky. Stop moving okay. just a little. We'll be good. There we go. Judy K, not Jody K. I'm sorry. I did say Judy, but it may have come out. It came out, Judy. Uh, okay. Um, that was really so, good. <laughs> uh, well, hey, we try. Um, Sandy, is there anything you did like about it? You seemed to like it or you didn't like it? I Overall, Diana very much. You what? I liked Diana, the actress. Oh, uh, she, I, I guess she's... It's a I thought she was okay. It's a desperately talented cast. But when the whole ensemble, the staff at Buckingham Palace are there, boom, da -doom, da -doom, da -doom. what the, f are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And the camera work was so clumsy. 
that it was ridiculous. There were times. Did you like the uh, press and how they were clearly the antagonists? The, it's but it, oh, oh, okay, yes, the but British I mean, it was press just... are, are 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 as repulsive as they come, and I thought they were be, they were depicted quite well. Me too. Uh, I like what that. annoyed the f out of how about me, the aid scene, John? That now this is in the second act, Sandy. So you didn't see it in the second act. She goes to the hospital and meets AIDS patients. Starts but out awful. In mm. reality. Uh, it was very different. What they showed her doing was walking into an outpatient clinic and meeting perfectly fine looking young men. Yeah, nothing who, on, no marks on them. I said, well, there, try there, was, them, there wasn't anything to indicate they had AIDS except them saying they had AIDS. The people who she went and hugged and kissed in the hospital, which caused all the fuss, were people who were on the brink of death who looked like they were from Auschwitz. They, you know, they were wasting away and covered with Carposi sarcoma. And she hugged those people and kissed them. They belittled what she did with AIDS patients. And, and I thought that was just cheapening one of the most dramatic things she did in her life. And this show had one other fatal flaw. Half the time, they didn't show you, they told you. They told you she went to a minefield and walked through it. They told you she did this. They told you she did that. And the, the disgusting conversation between her and her boyfriend, where he says, I'll teach you how to ride a horse. Oh, really? I don't have the right horse. Oh, I, do you have the right horse for me? Yeah, I've got the right horse. I'll teach you. And it's all clearly about sex. Quite frankly, Prince Harry is now under contract with Netflix, a multi-million dollar contract to do a series with them. If Harry Windsor Mountbatten has an ounce of decency, if he really wants to stand up for his mother the way he says he wants to, if he and his family give a shit about Diana, he will cancel that contract. He'll quit it because he has no business working for a company that would promote any musical that demeaned Diana like this show did. It really, I'm, if you see the second act, she's, she's a whore in the second act. And I'm sorry, the whore is Camilla and the biggest whore is Charles. So Cranky Squirrel, John. John, Cranky Squirrel has written, to my sensibility, Entertainment Weekly has the definitive verdict. Diana the musical is rather like the royal family itself these days. Expensive and pointless. Thank I don't agree world. about the royal family. I think yes. they're interesting and fun, which all the all the ratings of the crown and stuff show. Well, okay. put it, Frankie Squirrel. And in the few minutes we have left, if anyone else wants to join in the conversation, please put in comments. We will respond. We will read them. Um, uh, oh, it, it, but this, this no, Harry. The children aren't even in the play. They don't, we never see them except for the Harry, baby. Prove something to Archie. Quit Netflix. Your mother left you over $20 million in her will. She That's left, you, yes, but 20 million bucks is good money. Uh, what do you think? His wife is going to pay for anything? She hasn't worked in years. Oh she my God. Okay. Don't even get started on her. Uh, the, the, the one who starts the trouble with his family and she says, okay, walk away from the money. Okay, now, John, one of, one on of my things today is going to go out to Netflix. This. And so I'm hoping that Netflix could possibly hire me. So possibly we could just move along no, no, and say that we're you grateful to Netflix. Netflix. For giving us the show. Cranky Squirrel is saying he couldn't care less about the Royals and hated the musical. Thank you, Cranky Squirrel. What I'm saying, Bill, is if they did a musical like this about your mother, would you want a contract with Netflix? Don't do this to me. My mother's deceased. I, so I, I don't know what I'm saying. Now, if they do a musical like that about my mother, I will happily work with Netflix. Finally, someone will have told the truth about I was going to say, look, if you want to just hire me. What do I have? Here we go. They can insult my my mother all they want because they won't be able to keep up with what I would say. All right. Uh, was, we're, uh, we're, now, the, the one other bit of news, uh, there was some news this week we wanted to get to, Bill? Yes. Uh, oh, I can do things quick, quick. Uh, yes. Believe it or not, Antonio Banderas will be in and will direct a, a Spanish version of Company. It's going to be Compañera. He's going to direct it and star. He's 61 years old. Therefore, apparently, I could play this part. Well, and you know what? Uh, depending on how he looks these days, why not? Go well, ahead I look fabulous, too. I'm sure that we can all agree. 
By the way, Mr. G has chimed in to say for 200 million, say what you want. Oh, is that what they're paying, Harry? 200 million? I don't think Netflix has Let that kind of thing. Um, Daniel Craig and Ruth Nega will be doing uh, Macbeth, directed by Sam Gold. That yeah. will be that's oh, very impressive. That's a great idea. Come on to Broadway and do the one show that destroys every career that tries it on Broadway. And then maybe he'll succeed otherwise. It ate Lionel Barrymore alive. It ate the original uh, uh, um, um, Elephant Man alive, the actor who played the Elephant Man. He did a Macbeth and died. Christopher Plummer. I watched one of the greatest actors of my time. He and Glenda Jackson in Macbeth. And it was a bomb. He was horrible. She was brilliant. He was horrible. He had no idea what to do. There is a reason why people say this play is cursed. He will regret this. He has he has not much in the way of Shakespearean experience on stage. He will regret this. That I am predicting. Passover is closing. Uh, and uh, let's discuss very quickly. Uh, John, wait, I'll do this, and then I'll let John talk. Look at the time. Aladdin. Aladdin opened, and then I believe I got this right, the next day they had to close for one night due to members of the crew having COVID. They opened again and then had to go down for t at least two weeks, 10 um, shows. Uh, one of us in this screen here, who is a writer for various things, including, well, I want to start, who is a writer, predicted that this was going to happen and took a lot of shit for I, making comments I was, like I this. Was, I, I, did an interview for, I did an interview for MSNBC that's on their website, and I got criticized from all directions uh for I saying really, I, I got uh, for saying that if we reopen too soon we're going to have shows closing and reopening and closing and that's going to hurt ticket sales even more and that's what's happening uh, now only aladdin that we know of so far when aladdin tried to reopen it was actually at the tkts booth see right now most broadway shows are not selling out they're not selling they're lying can i say this Broadway is lying. They're not selling out. They're pretending that they're selling out uh, because they want to convince everyone, come on in and pay full price. So what they're doing is they're papering every house to get through. Up to 30 to 40 percent of some of these houses are paper because I, most people cannot afford the two to three hundred bucks that these shows want you to pay right now. I'm not going to pay two hundred bucks to see musicals I've seen already. And I'm not going to pay that to see a musical as long as I live, because two hundred bucks is a plane is, is a two hundred bucks is a flight to Miami. I am going to go on a nice vacation. I can fly for free. Well, yeah, yeah, not no more. You can't not no more. You can't. Uh, you used yes, to I can. I still, I uh, know I'm free for life. Yes. For life. For life. I've retired. Yes. And my husband. That's nice for life. You should yes. enjoy your life that way. Yeah, we're going to go to Reno, normal, I'm sure, at some point. No, for us, normal, just went, what? For, us, <laughs> for us normal human beings, 200 bucks for a ticket is obscene. It's yeah. disgusting. It has no Hold excuse down. for it because it's greed. It's greed. It's greed. Uh, uh, so very soon, all of these shows are going to start desperately showing up on TKTS and on your TDF. Or join TDF if you're in the New York area. If you can qualify for the Theater Development Fund, TDF, get yourself a $40 membership because you'll be able to pick up tickets for under 60 bucks to almost every show in town once this initial stupidity bakes down and they have to start paying bills. Uh, everyone, please. Stay safe. Don't let anyone's politics get in the way of your well-being and your health. Uh, Sandy, love to you and your family. Bill, love to you and your husband. Uh, I mean, uh, Sandy, so proud of you. So proud of you. So, so thrilled Thank that you, you are doing what you do. And to everyone out there, please keep loving theater and keep loving musicals. See you soon. Thanks for Bye. being with us. Bye-bye.